Where the Crawdads Sing by Delia Owens is a novel that intricately weaves together themes of isolation, resilience, and the profound impact of nature on the human spirit. Set against the backdrop of the North Carolina marshes, the story unfolds the life of Kia Clark, the mysterious marsh girl of Barkley Cove. As a young girl in the 1950s, Kia's life begins with the progressive abandonment by her family. Her mother walks out one day, never to return, followed by her siblings who leave to escape their abusive drunk father. Eventually, her father also disappears, leaving Kaya to fend for herself at the tender age of 10. Despite her isolation, Kaya learns to survive in the marshes, drawing on the natural world as her teacher and caregiver. Kia grows up in her solitary existence, shunned by the townspeople who consider her feral and uneducated. She sells muscles to Jumpin, an African-American man who operates a local gas general store with his wife Mabel. They become her friends and surrogate parents. Kaya's only other contact with the outside world is her strong bond with a seagull she calls Sunday Justice, illustrating her profound connection with nature. As Kaya matures, two young men from town enter her life. The first is Tate Walker, who encounters Kaya while fishing in the marshes. A gentle and kind soul, similar in spirit to Kaya, Tate teaches her to read and write, and the two nurture a deep bond built on shared passion for the marsh and its wildlife. Tate leaves for college, promising to return. His departure echoes the series of abandonments Kia has experienced, reinforcing her sense of being left behind. After Tate's exit, Kia crosses paths with Chase Andrews, Barkley Cove's beloved quarterback. Charming and popular, Chase is intrigued by the elusive Marsh Girl. The two engage in a secretive romance, but Chase's intentions are far from pure. Unlike the intellectual and respectful bond she shared with Tate, Kaya's relationship with Chase is marked by his desire for conquest, and the townspeople's prejudices against Kaya become painfully apparent. When Chase promises marriage but marries someone else, Kaya learns of the betrayal and retreats even further into the solitude of the marsh. The novel's narrative is interspersed with a murder investigation in the 1960s. Chase Andrews is found dead and foul play is suspected. His fall from a fire tower in the marsh leads to a whirlwind of speculation and gossip with fingers quickly pointing at Kaya. As the investigation unfolds, it becomes clear that Chase had many enemies and a history of abusive behavior. Despite this, the circumstantial evidence against Kaya mounts. Kia is arrested and charged with the murder of Chase Andrews. The trial is a spectacle, attracting attention far beyond the small town. As an outsider, Kaya's connection with the natural world is exoticized and used to paint her as capable of cold-blooded murder. Tate, who has never stopped loving Kaya, returns to stand by her. He uncovers a key piece of evidence that proves Kaya's innocence, implying that someone else killed Chase, but he hesitates to come forward out of fear of implicating his friend and local doctor, Tom Milton, whom he suspects. The trial ends with a shocking twist when Kaya is surprisingly acquitted. Despite the lack of concrete evidence, the sentiment of uncertainty surrounding her life in the marsh and Tate's newly discovered proof create reasonable doubt among the jurors. Kaya is set free, returning to her beloved marshes where she lives out the rest of her life. After her acquittal, Kaya's life takes a turn towards the bright side. Her deep knowledge of the marsh leads her to a successful publishing career as an author and artist of nature books, bringing her financial independence and a measure of respect from the outside world. Kaya and Tate rekindle their relationship, finding solace in each other's enduring love. They live together in peaceful isolation, deeply content in their world within the marsh. Near the end of the story, an elderly Kaya passes away calmly in her boat, surrounded by the natural beauty that had been both her sanctuary and identity. After her death, Tate discovers that Kaya kept mementos from the day Chase died, including a shell necklace that belonged to Chase and a poem written in Kaya's hand that confesses to the act. The revelation suggests that Kaya did indeed kill Chase, but did so ingeniously, using her intimate knowledge of the tides and marsh to her advantage, ensuring she had an alibi. The story concludes with Tate deciding to protect Kaya's secrets, even in death. He disposes of the evidence, maintaining her innocence in the eyes of the world. The novel ends with a profound sense of the duality of human nature and the mysterious depths of the human heart.
as Kia's life demonstrates the lengths to which a person will go to protect themselves and their sanctity. Where the crawdads sing is a tale of survival, the beauty and brutality of nature, and the indomitable spirit of a girl who, against all odds, carves out her own place in the world. You can listen to the full audiobook for free by following the URL in the description.